Hey there guys, alright, today we are back with some more History Matters, and this time, another of their short animated documentaries, but this one on why did England restore its monarchy after its civil war. Before we dive in, let's go, before you dive in, fucking shit, before we dive in, make sure you go and check out the links in the description box below, I'd love it if you join the Discord and follow me over at Twitch. There we go, god, that was a struggle, oh man. Uh, anyways, why did England restore its monarchy after its civil war? Um, because they then had a dictator, I think. Hold on, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember pieces of information. Dogs are barking. Yes, he's very upset. My dog is very, yeah, he barking. Okay. Yeah, I think he's done. Um, why did England restore its monarchy? I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. I'm blanking on this information. I, uh, I let, let's just dive in. In the midst, see, see if uh, what History Matters says jogs by memory. 17th century, England experimented with republicanism. This experiment <laughs> was the outcome of a clash of ideas over the divine right of kings, the authority to tax, and the separation of powers, and soon the separation of King Charles's head from his body. And that's a good one. That's a good After one. After this, England spent over a decade without a monarchy before restoring Charles' son as King Charles II. But given that the country had been run without a king for all of this time, why did Parliament and the people feel the need to restore the monarchy? So, throughout Charles... Well... Is it... Well, he kind of... The, the republicanism that they ran with was very much still a dictatorship. It was essentially still a... A monarchy, um, kind of just authoritarianism. It was the first reign, he and Parliament had a difficult relationship. Charles believed that as God's chosen ruler of these lands, everyone who lived there had a duty to shut up and do exactly as he said all of the time. Many of those in Parliament felt differently. Most of the arguments that Charles had with Parliament throughout his reign were over taxation, specifically whether or not the king had the authority to levy taxes alone. But there were also arguments over matters of religion, particularly over tolerance of Catholics and how to approach the governance of Ireland. The king dismissed Parliament several times over the course of his reign when he didn't get his way, and after Ireland rebelled, some in Parliament believed that Charles was working with the Catholic rebels there to destroy Parliament, and thus make himself an absolute monarch in the same way as Louis XIII or XIV of France were. The king worried that his opponents were plotting to oust him and so tried to have them arrested. He failed and so he bravely fled London. Mm. As a result, Parliament demanded limits on his power, he shockingly said no, and so it was time for war. Long story short, Parliament won, Charles was captured, he incited rebellion and was tried for treason. The king was found guilty and in 1649 he was beheaded. There was another war, Parliament won again, and by 1653 England was run by a Lord Protector, Oliver Cromwell, at the head of a military dictatorship. But a mere seven years later, in spite of how much was done to remove the monarchy, it was back. So why? Well, there were many reasons. The first was that Cromwell was the person who kept it all together, and after his death, his son became Lord Protector. And Richard... Essentially monarchy. Cromwell, unlike his father, was not well respected, and many felt that his weak hand would lead to another civil war which everybody wanted to avoid. Furthermore, the English Parliament was fractured and so no business was getting done, and many just wanted a return to stability. The second reason was that many of those in charge were Puritans, and they had a very strong sense of moral righteousness and cracked down on activities they felt were immoral, such as drunkenness or most notably the celebration of Christmas. This wasn't much fun for those who had to live under the rules but may have disagreed with them, and so for those the restoration of a leader who would leave them alone was a positive. The third reason was that Charles Stuart made it clear that the overwhelming majority of those who fought against his father would be forgiven, and that those in positions of power would retain their positions and unlike his father he would govern as a monarch bound by the wishes of Parliament. These things combined were why, in 1660, Charles Stuart returned to England from the Netherlands, and both sides agreed to act as if the civil war and following regicide never happened, until some of the same problems cropped up again a couple of decades later. I hope you enjoyed this episode with this. Okay, it didn't really jog my memory on the information, unfortunately, so I really don't have anything to add to this. This, the glorious rev this was the glorious revolution, right? Hold on, I'm going to my phone. I'm going to look up Glorious Revolution, I think. Glorious. No, Glorious Revolution came, was the one. Oh, damn it. That was James the uh, second. Or James the seventh of England. This was just the English Civil. Yeah, English Civil War. And then a few decades later, 
Glorious Revolution. Okay. Memory's now getting jogged a little bit. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, that was why England restored its monarchy after its civil war. I think they did a great job here uh, covering this in, in 2 minutes 40 seconds. Um, I really wouldn't change much. I don't know what else they're, they could do to really um, answer this question better. Honestly, um, I feel like it was pretty well covered. Of course, you can always dive deeper and expand upon it. Uh, but, like, you know, they didn't need to talk about the Civil War itself. They just needed to talk about, like, uh, Cromwell coming into power, dying, and then, you know, his son not being as good as him. And then, of course, the concessions that uh, Charles's successor uh gave uh charles charles no james was this i don't fucking i already forgot his name uh the guy that become king <laughs> 1660 um yeah this was a this was a decent it wasn't not my favorite mainly because i still feel like the answer wasn't entirely it wasn't the question wasn't entirely answered to my satisfaction i think they could have i think there was needed to maybe i think this was another one of those questions where it's like they needed to spend a bit more time on this. I don't think their three minute, um, uh, their three minute stri uh, like their three minute documentary series. I don't think that the qu this qu I don't think this question fits this super short form format. I think this is one of those kinds of questions that you need to expand upon a bit more and maybe like ten minute video, um, like the last history matters video we watched, um. But overall, decent job. I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.